super fun stuff. Welcome to Super Fun Stuff, and yet another print and paint video. In this video, we continue making Marvel miniatures. I have so many minis now to make, I didn't even know who I wanted to make next. So let's take a guess. So this character was first introduced in the 90s and became one of the most popular Marvel characters. When his first comic came out in 1997, the writers thought it would be canceled any second, so they wrote anything they wanted. This is why this character speaks his mind, is very offensively funny, but let's not forget extremely dangerous. He has made cameos in almost all the comics, but he has always had strong ties with the mutant comics. So who do you think he is? Not trying to make it too easy, but you probably guessed it, it's Deadpool. Deadpool aka Wade Wilson is a loudmouth mercenary who is an expert in combat, and has the mutant ability of healing. I'm sure most of you have seen the movie, so I won't go into his backstory. What makes Deadpool Deadpool is his ability to break the fourth wall and talk to the reader. It's a very unique idea that made comic book reading more fun and interesting. He's crazy, he's a fun character, and most people know who he is by now. The movies did a great job portraying this character. So out there, there's quite a bit of good Deadpool models. One in particular I liked was a sassy Deadpool created by Mike Bolt. I think it did a great job of showing his personality. It's a well-sculpted piece with nice details. A couple notes about this model. The swords are completely separate. You can actually print them out. I decided to sheath them, but they do print. At the scale I was at, they're very tiny and fragile. The only other thing is that the skull pedestal thing he's holding, I didn't really like it. So I printed some spare Ultron parts from an Iron Man model I found online instead. So the idea was to have Deadpool doing his leg kick pose with a dead Ultron looking like they're posing for a photo. I felt like this would be something Deadpool would do. He would kill somebody and then take the time to do something stupid or funny. Getting the height just right required me to lift up Ultron's bust a bit, so Deadpool's hands meet his shoulder. With the height marked out, I glue Ultron in place. Now the problem is, how do I pin Deadpool? He has small feet and not much surface area that meets the ground. This is where I make a makeshift plastic pin system. I mark about where the Deadpool will stand, I take a small plastic GW sprue I had left over, and cut one of the circular pieces out. Then I cut out a circle in the cork basing all the way down to the plastic base underneath. Next I glued the plastic sprue to the cork hole, but the hole isn't perfect and there's some gaps. Luckily with cork it's easy to manipulate, so I take some pieces and shove and glue them in the cracks. I also made some other holes in the base earlier, so I had to go fix those too. So you can see here that Deadpool's foot hits the exact spot where you need him to stand. Now let's pin him permanently. I take some side resin and cure both his feet and hands. I use a UV light to cure the resin to create a really strong bond. And he's all pinned and everything is stable. Next I go around the Ultron body and fill the extra space with cork. I glue and pressure fit the cork in all the spots. Also I go around the base and add smaller rocks, a little bit of a wall, and extra pieces just to get more depth. At the end, I decide to add this Ultron arm holding on the Deadpool's foot, just to make it a little more fun. So he's all set for painting. The models I had were already primed from before, so I take a heavy brush and prime the rest of the base. With the base primer, I go in with my pewter gray color, then from there I add a heavy strong wash all over the rocks. Lastly for the base, I dry brush my other lighter colors and finish up with the dark brown pigment. Now for the base colors, I start with the red and silver. I'll plan to do the black over the top to red since it's easier to cover. I got some new brushes this time, I got the Da Vinci Maestros, so let's see how well they work for us today. I go in and paint the rest of the base colors, first up is the brown for his belt and his accessories. I take my time not to go over the red too much, keeping it very clean. Now I paint all the black accessories like his sword, neck, wrist, and ankle bands. Once I'm done with those, it's time to be a little more precise. I paint his black markings for his costume. The black I'm using is strong, and if you make a mistake, it's a tad difficult to fix. Slowly and surely, I paint his markings on his chest and his face. And the base colors are complete. And he's looking pretty good. But next up is washes. I use a red wash on certain places of his red suit. I decide not to use it as a glaze as the red came out really nice and bright. Rather not cover up all that nice work I did. I use a brown wash for the brown accessories, and a black wash for the silver areas like Ultron. Even from the washes, the definition can really come out. Next we go into highlights. Red is one of those colors that can be kind of tricky to highlight. Some like to mix white with red for highlights, but then you go towards the pink spectrum. Instead we go towards orange, and I use thin layers of lava orange. I build up these layers to give a smoother transition look. 
Some of the spots I do more of a comic book style where I make little ticks for the transitions. It gives a cool little effect that breaks up the larger areas. For the black I go dark gray to a lighter gray, pretty standard highlighting. And for the silver I go brighter silver. I try not to do too much of the brighter silver as I still want it to look tarnished. And finally the eyes, I take my new zero brush and paint them on. To make Ultron look a little more distressed, I add a reddish pigment to the broken areas. This is the same color I used on War Machine from the last video. Additionally, I take black paint and color in some of the broken Ultron areas to make it look really broken. With the base all done, I also add one last touch. I had a few more bullet shells left over from the War Machine I made, so I stick those on the base. Oh, and I forgot to highlight the brown, so I went back and added a few brighter colors to the mix. There's always something that I forget. And he's done. What I didn't show you was I added some blood for the blood god blood effect for the Ultron's fluids. I mixed it with black to make it more look like oil. Splattered it on the back wall and around Ultron a little bit. Now I have my own sassy Deadpool miniature. He was a pretty simple paint job project, which took a little time figuring out how to base him correctly. All these Marvel models have the tiniest feet. With Deadpool looking good, it's time to move on to the next guy. For my next print and paint video, and this time I picked one out ahead of time, I will be making one of the most classic Marvel characters who was created by the greats Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and Larry Lieber. He is one of the strongest heroes in the Marvel Universe and has shown to be godly at defeating his enemies in both the comics and the movies. What will make this next one fun is that it will involve clear resin and a custom modified sculpt by me. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters, and thank you for watching. Thank you.